I dare you to go inside, the smaller colt chirped. Yeah, the larger colt agreed. I, I double dare you to go in. Golden Oaks gulped as she turned away from the pair and towards the smallest cave entrance she ever seen. Once for school, her and her classmates had visited a cavern tall enough to fit three carriages stacked on top each other. This cave, on the other hoof, seemed like nothing more than an overlarge crack in the wall. Golden Oaks faced the two cults. Why would I even want to go in there? The smallest cult chuckled. Because he double dared you to. You know, like, have to. Just because you double dare doesn't mean you suddenly have to do it, she said, stomping a hoof. Does that mean I could quadruple dare the two of you to stand on your heads and sing for me? Since four is twice as large as two? The two cults took a moment, seemingly calculating in their heads, before smirking again. Every pony knows that dares can only be doubled, the smaller cult said. Yeah, echoed the larger cult. Those are the rules. Now you have to go in. This is dumb, Golden Oaks muttered, staring down at her hooves. I'm going home. But don't you want some of the treasure that's in there? Even though she had her back to the smaller cult by this point, she could still see the picture, the greasy smile on his muzzle. It irked her. Lots. But what irked her even more was the fact she stopped in her tracks right after hearing the word treasure. Soon images of wooden crates full of golden bits filled her head. A jewel-coated scepter lay on top of it all. And what was behind it? The chests? A solid gold bike, perhaps? Heard it from a cult who knew this filly. Golden Oaks had completely lost focus. W wait, what? She gave her head a tiny shake. The smaller cult rolled his eyes. I was just saying that this cult I knew heard it from this filly. He knew that a friend of, of a friend of hers said there was treasure in that cave, and that anyone could go inside and get it if they wanted. Then why haven't either of you gone in yet? She asked sharply. We already did, the smaller colt boasted, lifting his chin. Last week. The larger colt cocked an eyebrow. We did? In return, the smaller colt kicked him in the shins. Yes, remember? The larger colt winced. Oh, now I remember. Yep, totally. If the colt's terrible back-and-forth routine wasn't enough evidence of a lie, the fact that the larger colt wouldn't even made it past the cave entrance sealed it. Now Golden Oaks was curious if even she could make it through. She knelt down to the narrow opening. It was smooth and diamond-shaped. And very very dark inside. Hello? Hello? She called, receiving the faintest of echoes in return. She stuck her head inside and felt the tip of her horn scrape along the top. She lit her horn with the only spell she knew at the time, a mass of energy hovering around the tip of her horn, not much bigger than a candle. Hello? She called again. She could almost imagine her words bounce from one smooth surface to the next. The walls were so clean cut. But the next noise that left her mouth was that of a shriek. One of the colts outside had given her a hard shove and pushed her the rest of the way through. The school bag on her back and all. Her quick outburst echoed down the rest of the darkened tunnel. You jerks! She yelled, picking herself up and facing them through the opening. That hurt! The colt's faces looked much brighter than before, now that she stood in the dim of the cave and they remained out in the warm afternoon sun. A cool chill soon crept up her spine. Just trying to help, the smaller colt said with a snort. Anyways, try to stay away from the cave bug while you're in there. Golden Oaks gulped. 
The what? The cave bug, he repeated. Don't go near it. Couldn't I just step on it? She asked curiously. Or roll it up in a tissue if I wanted to? It's big. The colt's eyes widened as he said the word big, if telling some ghost story to hush an audience. Yeah, the larger colt agreed. Super big. Some kid in Cantalot said he found a giant bug under his bed last month. Gave him a bunch of bites, too. Back to sleep or something. Now I know you're lying, Golden Oaks exclaimed. There's no treasure here. The colt shrugged. But what if I'm telling the truth? Timidly, Golden Oaks faced the remainder of the tunnel behind her. It couldn't go on forever. Could it? Will you at least wait for me? She asked, remaining focused on the darkness ahead of her. Until I get back? Sure, we'll stick around, the cult paused, eyeballing his friend. I have to help him find his yearbook he lost anyways. Golden Oaks let out a breath and took a step further inside the cave. She repeated the process once more and again. She was about to ask another question of the cults outside, but could already hear them arguing. You're sure you lost it out here? Positive. Then where is it? I don't know. It was in my bag the last time I had it. Maybe it fell out. Fell out where? How would I know? A few meters inside the cave, most of its creepy atmosphere had been clearly swept aside. As far as Golden Oaks knew, most caves had various tunnels or winding paths to them. Odd-shaped rocks, stalactites or stalagmatites, too. The cave that she was in now? None of that. At one point, she took a right and found the path ended only 12 steps later. The same for when she took a left and found the end of the path in less than 6 paces. The only point of interest was when Golden Oaks had to crawl on her belly to slide under a rock jutting out from the ceiling. Afterward, she had to nab her school bag off the ground and drag it back to her. And just like that, Golden Oaks reaches the end of the cave. Just how long she's been marching alone in the dark. It felt like mere moments. Three minutes, tops. Her shoulders slump and as she sighed. All this way for nothing? She muttered to herself miserably, glancing around the small area. She half expected the two cults from school to hurriedly jump out from behind a rock to try and scare her. One of them dressed as a big nasty bug. Perhaps. But no. She found there was no surprise laying in wait at the back of the cave for her. After all, no treasure either. Only a dumb stone wall! She spat, shoving her hoof against the cold rock surface. She gasped as it easily pushed inward, creating another small hole to enter. Flickers of red light danced around the edges. Tentatively, Golden Oak stuck her head inside, stopping the spell on her horn instantly. She wanted to gasp again, so she held out a hoof against her mouth to stifle it. The very last room inside the cave was a whole lot larger than the rest, Round and tall, the tips of its ceiling remained in shadows. Countless stacks of books circled the room, piles on each other until they toppled over. Most texts laid upon repair, tattered, torn, and even wet. Taped up on the walls were dozens of large pictures, crude and childlike. Markers? Paint? Pencils and ink? A small fire burned on the floor, well away from anything that might catch. It must have been magically made too, as no trail of smoke drifted off of it. From the room's small doorway, Golden Oaks counted for mismatched rugs and one immense wooden desk at the very center of all of it. Two of its legs had been broken and replaced by thick stacks of books. One chair sat in front of it, another behind. 
and in the chair behind the desk sat Miss Cheerly. Golden Oaks chirped, forgetting she was trying to be quiet at the time. It took Miss Cheerly an awful long time to set the book in her hooves down. She kept glancing from its pages down to Golden Oaks. She smiled, not showing her teeth. Her eyes remained half-lidded and not as expressive as usual. Maybe due to the dim of the room? Ah, Golden Oaks, Cheerly greeted warmly. How nice to see you again. But I... Um, Golden Oaks was truly at a loss for words. What are you doing here, Miss Cheerly? Weren't you just at the school? You only dismissed us a few minutes ago. It doesn't take me long to get here, Cheerly replied, her small smile never departing from her lips. If you know the right way in, she motioned to the chair in front of the desk. Come. Have a seat. Golden Oaks did as she was told, glamorating on the chair that felt as if it might fall to pieces at any moment. She knew the whole situation was strange. Beyond that, actually, but having Miss Cheerly as her teacher over the last few years basically meant that if she asks something of you, you usually do it. Um, do you live here? She asked her timidly. Like, in here. Cheerly laughed, not the same bubbly laugh that Golden Oaks had grown accustomed to. Oh, no, I'll only be here for a short time, I think. So, you have a... a normal home, like most ponies do? The question gave Cheerly a pause. I used to, yes, but I'm not sure I'll find a permanent place soon. Now in a higher position up on her chair, Golden Oaks was able to make out the book Cheerly had been glancing at before. It was their school's yearbook, left open on a particular page. Another yearbook lay underneath that one, from a school Golden Oaks had heard about but never been before, too. Have you finished your coloring project yet? Cheerly asked her cheerfully. Golden Oaks faced flushed. Oh, um, no. She grabbed at her school bag and pulled out a half-finished drawing. I've only done the background and outline. Really? I thought we had until Friday to hand it in. Cheerly nabbed the drawing from her suddenly, bringing it close to her face. Her smile widened until dimplets appeared. That is correct. I was only curious how you were coming along. A few students had already submitted them, you see. Without looking away from the drawings, Cheerly held out a hoof indicating the dozens of other child-made drawings taped to the walls. This is very good, Golden Oaks. Rather pretty, just like you. I'm sure it'll look even better once it's complete. Cheerly was so focused on the picture before her that Golden Oaks took the opportunity to lean across the desk and expect the propped open yearbook. Another icy chill crept up her spine. Golden Oaks could see her very own small picture near the bottom, and a much larger one on Miss Cheerly at the top, circled in red marker alongside the words, kind, sweet, and loud. Golden Oak's mouth went as dry as dust. You're not really Miss Cheerly, are you? Not Cheerly kept the drawing covering her face, blocking her from view. The fur around the hooves holding the edges of the drawing flickered from purple to black in random intervals. Oh, no, of course not. Not cheerily replied evenly. You would have have entered if I pretended to be anyone else. It was strange how numb Golden Oaks felt at the moment, as if she was somehow watching the scene and not actually participating in it. She surprised herself by asking, y You started the rumor about the treasure too, didn't you? 
Clever, Philly. Even with the paper soul blocking that cheerly from sight, Golden Oats thought she might be smiling, this time with her teeth visible. So, ponies would come visit you? All at once, Not Cheerly's fur settled on purple again. She lowered the paper and was still the same Cheerly copy as before, only now slightly confused. Sad, too? Now just why would you say something like that? She asked in a hushed tone. Golden Oak shrugged. It still felt like she was watching events unfold without her involvement. Maybe you're lonely? Lonely? Not cheerily said, seemingly disgusted by the word. I have my books. I have my stories. I have my pictures. I have my memories. My many, many memories. There's only one other thing I need in this world to keep going, and... Have you thought about not living in a spooky, dark cave? Golden Oaks cut in. I think if you weren't so difficult to find, more ponies would come visit you. Neatly and gently, Nat cheerily folded the drawing back up and set it at the corner of her desk. She looked away from the filly as her eyes shimmered, but only for a moment. Nice attempt, young one, but that's not how things work around here. Again, she smiled, big and bright, and somehow she had more teeth in her mouth than Miss Cheerly ever had. Sharp ones, too. You came in here searching for treasure, did you not? Not cheerily said in a far lower voice than before. Bits piled to the ceiling? Riches beyond measure. She left her chair abruptly, roughly knocking it to the floor. That was also when her skin began to change. Not all at once, but over time. It was as if the skin around her body had turned to liquid and someone had just dropped a pebble onto it causing it to ripple. Or is it a wish you want instead? Not cheerily asked angrily, slowly circling around the desk. Isn't that how all good fairy tales end? With a wish? Her skin continued to ripple, revealing sharp blackened bones and joints underneath. A large jagged horn soon poked through the cheerly disguise as did long strands of damp, turquoise hair that clung tight to her chest. From the moment Not Cheerly had left the desk, Golden Oaks had done the same, galloping towards the area she thought she had entered from. The only trouble was that the hidden door blended in so well with the stone, so she couldn't find the right area to push. Terrified, she shoved at all the stone she could reach, uh, stupid rock, move! Her frantic search for the hidden door came to an abrupt halt as she felt warm breaths atop her head. Turning around, she kept her back pressing tight against the stone. Nat cheerily smiled down at her. Now what is your wish, little mare? Golden Oak's jaw trembled. Uh, I wish my mommy was here. Nat cheerily stepped to her right, causing Golden Oaks to do the same, relocating her placement on the wall. She lowered herself to her, and the rippling on her skin ceased, leaving only a blackened, smooth figure before her. It seemed Golden Oaks had been talking to the bug inside the cave all along. The cave bug asked her, Who says I can't be your mommy, dearest? before breaking out into a laugh that was close to a scream. Suddenly, Golden Oaks felt the wall behind her give way, and she trembled through. She wasted no time once out the other side and ran as fast as she could into the pitch-black darkness. She illuminated her horn only when she remembered the section of the cave she had to crawl through. Good thing, too, as it appeared only a few seconds after she cast the spell. 
Once she reached the cave's entrance, she shot through the small hole like a champagne cork and didn't bother looking back. She must have been over 10 meters away before realizing neither of her schoolmates had waited for her, which was fine because... <laughs> Mommy! Golden Oaks yelped. She had never been more relieved to see her mother standing outside her school, waiting to walk her home. Her mother turned to her with a well-worn frown. Golden Oaks, where did you wander off to? I've been standing here for... Her sentence was cut short due to Golden Oaks launching herself into her chest. For over a minute, Golden Oaks tried to explain exactly where she's been, all the while burying herself more and more into her mother's chest. Huffled, gibberish, basically. You left that behind, her mother told her. I would hate for you not to finish it. Prying herself away from her, Golden Oak spun around and found both her school bag and her unfinished picture laying on the grass. Her pupils shrink as her eyes widen. Hurry home now. But when Golden Oak spun around again, she found she was completely alone, shivering, and she reached for the bag, noticing something happily twinkling inside. She opened it. Ten golden bits. Some treasure, after all.